turn in order to avoid a similar situation. Of course, with the swap of sides, they're going to have a different experience, but we'll see what it's going to be as Viger, it's going to be banned away straight up. Yeah, Viger's been the adaptation ban in both this series. I guess the other thing to take away also is that we have to remember that Zhao Hu had effectively four champions banned away from in the previous series. He was definitely targeted out, yeah. A, because they were on the red side and had to ban Kessid, and on B, just the targeted bans coming out from LGD. A lot of respect to that young mid laner who's done so many great things for Gamti. They have to get him a slightly better matchup or more of a comfort champion this time around. And Janna are actually going to hit the ban list here. We haven't seen the Corkies to be banned away yet, of course. With that Viger ban, then they're going to have to leave up either that Zerath or that Corky. And Gamti probably looking to first pick either of those ones. We'll see what, whether they do or whether they go for something else. Of course, there are lots of champions, a lot of contested picks still available. Eagle-eyed viewers will notice that Acorn is again being fielded yeah. today. There's been unsubstantiated rumors about Flame, but all we know so far, two games, two games from Acorn. Yeah, he has played this one a little bit in the past as well. I mean, having the 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 back-to-back -back Acorns to come through from LGD, just thinking that his communication with the team a little bit higher. Is there a term for multiple Acorns, bunch of Acorns? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. We'll have to talk to a florist about it, or you know, someone at some sort of place that sells seeds for trees. Not entirely sure. Lissandra is going to hit the ban list, though, as Ganty. They do not want to deal with that one again. That's going to force a Cassidy ban from LGD. And either that Zerath or the Corky able to be picked up from Ganty. We'll see whether they put a whole lot of uh, eggs in that one Corky basket, where the tail's going to get that comfort pick straight up. And you didn't mention, I mean, Imp doesn't play a lot of the old Corky. See, I'd take the Corky here just because, okay, you lock in the Zerath. He's in a pretty good matchup against most of the other options, but Jarvan is still available, and Jarvan's still the jungler with the most impact towards uh, Azeroth, just because, again, you get in yeah. there with your EQ combo, even just the Cataclysm forcing a flash through. Again, you kind of hope LGD commit to their jungler here. I'd like to see LGD not pick up a jungler, just leave that Jarvan option open, or, or, or lock it away. That's kind of the thing for LGD, is they, they really don't want a situation where Zerath can be picked safely. Yeah, LGD are going to take a little bit of time in order to think this one through, but looks like they're not going to listen to you, Papa Smithy. Going for Schwen's Lee Sin possibly early on. We'll see whether they change their mind on this one. And PYL very happy on that Leona in their last matchup, and we'll see whether that's going to be the option. But not going for a Vi here as well, and Schwen looked fantastic on that champion as well. It's a good point. I mean, the Solar Flare, you can say, does deal with Zerath quite well. It's not quite the Jarvan because you don't have the EQ into the R. You don't have quite the two options at locking down that Zerath. But again, they must be conscious that Gamti have shown Zerath multiple times. Azir has been banned away. That's probably been Zhao Hu's go-to champion. Zerath has been his second string. Yeah, and we'll see whether he goes for it. Of course, Huey looking for that Rek'Sai again. Had some decent play in the early stages of that game using that tunnel system in order to get around the map, make sure that he was where he needed to be. And they did get the picks earlier on in that matchup course missing danger just a little bit of course he's a uh, Jarvan has been pretty instrumental in their last few victories but Jahu gonna lock away the Morgana here interesting pick I mean the Morgana of course it could be a flex pick we've seen Morgana top yeah. Morgana mid support Morgana so many options available for that Morgana of course an excellent choice against the targeted CC coming out from the Leona yeah. If they do go for the Zerath, it's another tool potentially for whatever immovable mid laner they go for. That's kind of been Jahu's thing, has been the Zeas and Zeraths of the mid lane. We don't expect him to change. He hasn't shown a lot of pick champion play, but I'm sure he has those champions in his bow as well. And that's going to be the Maokai locked in here for Acorn, growing up to be a big tree himself in that top lane. Imp, as the counter times down, he's going to lock away the Graves, and I like this pickup, of course. The Morgana sort of being a little bit of a blocker pick to that Callista as well, because she loves to be able to have that Black Shield, and using that together is really fantastic. But, of course, didn't affect them in the last matchup, as let me going to look at the Nah for himself here, and that would be a super tank matchup there in the top lane. After a really shaky week four, where LG lost four games, of course, we mentioned already three losses on Callista during that week. Imp and week five on the Graves, 17, one and six, and nine, zero, eight was two performances on Graves. He really stepped up, really got his heels up on that champion. He's playing on a very comfort pick now with the Graves. As Gamti, they're considering their options. They thought about the Ezreal for a <laughs> long time, but it's that very predictable Zerath. 
Yeah, and we've seen Zareth used in conjunction with Nar quite a lot here as well, sort of able to allow Nar to get really far forward and use that Nar ultimate into a wall or something like that, and Jahu can just follow up from so far away, but oh my goodness, is Wayless going to possibly go for a bit of this Yasuo? You do see the knock-up synergy coming through from the Lee Sin. Of course, yeah. Lee Sin... Uh, Yasuo has been the duo that the Invictus Gaming have picked up multiple times. They already have magic damage coming through from the Maokai. Okay, they're going to be light on magic damage. It's going to be mostly a physical damage comp, but this will be exciting. Yep. Actually going to lock in Diana though, ladies and gentlemen. So we're not going to have the exciting Yasuo yeah, pick. We're going to have the standard Diana in the mid lane. That's very, very interesting. Diana's a great champion at doing... What was the matchup we saw so much a year ago, Atlas? But Diana yeah. versus Oriana. Very similar kind of flavor to that with the Zereth versus Diana matchup. Diana, if she can close gaps, get into melee range, you know, able to use the disruption on her E, it's a very interesting pick here. It's not 5.3, so it's not, yeah, the, I was just uh, thinking not the shield buff coming through, you know, the relative buff with... The shield traveling faster, you get the double shield more often. This is Wayless. We talked about pocket picks. Like, all right, he showed the Anivia. We know he's got something else. The Diana just ready for the potential 5.3 buffs in the future. He's practicing. He's going to get his eye in right now. Oh, yeah. Looking very, very scary on that champion. But I don't know. We'll see how it actually works out. But as you can see, Xiaohu, he's on a definite comfort pick against the first time that we've seen Diana since, I think, Skara played it in the North American LCS. It's been very unpopular. We've seen a little bit of Diana top. I believe one team actually already tried it out in the LPL. Didn't go very well for them. Tail versus Imp. Corky finally gets the Corky. That's kind of been the big thing for Gamti, has been the Corky picks. They're excellent at early rotations with the Corky. They've got the Morgana just for a bit of insurance, probably for Xiaohu, to be honest. Not so much for yeah. Corky, just so that... He can uh, have a defensive option against the Solar Flare. There's some very practiced champions coming through for Gamti, but it's a complete wrench thrown in with that last pick, Diana. Yeah, and how are you supposed to deal with that? I mean, of course, in the lane, take us through how the laning phase goes for Zerath versus Diana, because I personally haven't seen Diana being really played in the competitive scene since the release of Zerath. Well, it's a range first melee matchup. We have to remember that. So in the early levels, especially, you get the harass in, but I think we're going to go to game. Yeah, let's hop into the game and see for ourselves. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, under the rift with Gamti taking on LGD for our second time here on the rift. And Gamti now on our blue side. And as you, as you stated there very effectively, a bit of a monkey wrench being thrown in with this Diana pick, of course. And who else is going to do it but Wayless? I mean, really. We were wondering out loud, firstly, what will be the big pick coming through from Wayless. First, it was the Anivia last time out, which threw things off. One lane against the LeBlanc. Diana has potential in lane against Zerus. So talking about this matchup, in the early levels, melee versus range, yeah. Zerus actually going to be able to use his passive quite effectively to get mana regen. So he should be able to spam his spells quite effectively. You're just going to try and minimize damage is Wayless. But from level six, it's much like a Akala. You have that ranged gap closer. You can get in Zerus' face. You can disrupt his abilities with your E, and you can do, you have a lot of tankiness. Of course, Wayless can build Abyssal Scepter quite happily this game, double scale with AP and magic resist on the shields coming through, but we might see a fight. Yeah, LGD actually the flash into the shield of Daybreak Shao, who's gonna fall down for first blood, and Schwen, no it wasn't, it was Imp picking it up, and that is so frightening. He could start with an extra longsword now. Yeah, Xiaohu, I'm not sure what was happening there for Xiaohu. He was so aggressively positioned, picked away from Imp, and like you say, going to be a lot of gold in the pocket of Graves. Yeah, but doesn't quite have enough time to head back to base, so not going to be able to have that item advantage, and they do manage to sort out a lane swap here as well. Okay, so the lane swap's on. We can see Chuen and PYL starting at the blue buff. Graves versus Corky. It's a pretty good matchup for Graves, so again, it's Imp just wanting to dodge the 2v2 matchup until he picks up that BF Sword Power Spike and can really boss around his lane. Yeah, of course, that may turn around yet again when Tail picks up that Trinity Force, but this is Tail's most comfortable champion. He's finally on it, and we'll see whether it's going to make all of the difference in this match. Smite going to be used on the red buff here, actually. Huey holding onto that one until he managed to make it to that camp. Make sure he picks up a little bit of extra health for that one. You can see moving around to the Raptors now, and Wayless just relentlessly pushing in this lane. 
Yeah, so we already see the top lane. There's no jungle follow happening because of that first blood already entering lane. Let me, there's not much you can do against Imp. This is the second time actually we've seen Imp in a solo lane as Graves. His solo lane is actually very, very strong as he takes some good trades against Let Me in the top. Maokai enters lane half health, already level two. Ping's level two before the duo lane does. I mean, you have to give the advantage to Maokai in this 1v2 so far, at least. Yeah, and Akon, of course, able to take a camp relatively easily here as Maokai. Of course, feels very at home in that jungle. And Teleport forced to be used from Let Me straight away. Just wants to pick up some extra pots and be a little bit safer in this lane. You can see Imp. He's already level two, well on his way to his next level. Yeah, the crucial thing for Akon, though, is because of all the shenanigans at level one, couldn't set up the saplings at the, uh, at the yeah. Raptors and pick up the instant level two. He entered lane half experience, so it was a big win for him. But look at Huey's a very smart rotation to come to the top lane, help to push out, because Graves was really bossing around the 1v1. Yeah, and they need to make sure that this wave hits the turret here as well, so that Im can't freeze that one up and stop Let Me from being able to pick up any of that farm. Xiaohu, meanwhile, going to utilize the fact that his wave's pushed out and use Xerath's very effective wave clear. Underneath that turret, you can see though, Wayless doing fantastically in this lane. Has that extra Doran's ring as well. And one thing that we didn't mention is Wayless has got teleport as well as Acorn. I feel like that will help kind of baby him through the difficult laning phase. You're going to eat a lot of harass coming through from the Xerath in the early levels, especially before you have any real counterplay open to you at level 6. And speaking of counterplay, Big wraparound from Huey. Yeah, no moon Moonfall available here from Wayless as well. He's actually got two points in both of his other, other abilities, but it is going to be enough. Of course, that shield being very helpful. And does have to blow the flash, though. So we'll see whether Huey makes another appearance in this lane. It isn't actually going to go and clear out the tunnel just yet. So there is the wraparound potential from Huey, but he's cleaning his wraiths. Not quite the time to do it again. I mentioned the double scaling coming through from Diana's W. What I say there basically is that any sort of shield that scales on AP, obviously you're getting offensive and defensive stats from the AP. But then if you pick up resists, resists when they're interacting with flat health, basically amplify the, uh, the health of a shield. So if you have more magic resist and the shield does effectively 80 health, if you have more magic resist, it's just more health. So again, it yeah. makes some implied tankiness. So Abyssal Scepter, one of the core items here for Wayless in the mid lane. Yeah, your effective health pool is definitely a lot higher if you manage to get both of those shields procced. Of course, if Wayless gets insta-killed, I'm not going to be able to get that one down. So we'll see whether he builds that Zonya's Hourglass as well so that he can have a little bit of stasis and stop that burst potential from possibly coming through. Of course, there is some kill threats on the side of Gamty, but that's going to be a very easy early dragon to come through from LGD. It completely snuck away from Gamty. Remember, they have graves in the top lane. Usually when you don't have your AD carry around, let alone your bottom, complete a bottom lane, you cannot pick up this dragon. So it's a sneaky one, but a very effective play from LGD. Yeah, just capitalizing on the fact that Gamty hadn't had an opportunity to put down many of those wards. And Wayless now with a huge experience advantage here in this mid lane. He's actually managed to, as you point out, get a big experience advantage. Of course, when he shopped, he was able to instantly show back up in lane. So he's been able to get the minion wave organized as he wants. He's got a 13 CS advantage. You feel like Jahu, one, he won't have played this matchup very often, and two, just that little adaptation of picking up the teleport has completely reset a lot of the laning mechanics involved here, and Wayless significantly ahead. Yeah, Wayless having a lot of health in this lane as well with that double Doran's ring that he did opt for very early on. And we'll see what he decides to do. Of course, there are a few... Uh, schools of thought on this Diana play. Of course, Nashville's Tooth was an option that a lot of Dianas decided to go for, but then a lot of people decided to build sort of the Lich Main and having a lot of extra burst damage on the likes of Diana. We'll see what Wayless decides to go for. If he does get that uh, Abyssal Scepter, what offensive choice he's going to have. I mean, Nashville's Tooth kind of fell away. One, because Riot continued to make that item more expensive. When it was sitting around 2,100 gold, it was just really double dip with the passive and was really very strong pickup on Diana to pick up that CDR. It even had a bit of mana regen at the time to, to really support her kit. But now, with it being more expensive and just with the meta moving towards some more of these AoE control fights, you're not going to get many auto attacks off in the back of a fight as Diana. It's very good as a split push option and with teleport, they might still opt into it, Wayless, if he gets going in terms of gold. But speaking of Wayless, a lot of people in the mid lane. Yeah, the Flash Stun is going to land here as well. So much layering of CC and Gamty. They punish the mid laner of LGD. Yeah, the experience advantage is only going to be temporary. Zhao's going to be able to push up this lane. He did use his flash. There is potential 
1v1 assassination coming out from Wayless, but they're going to push aggressively here. It was a great early rotation from Gamti. Yeah, they may be able to get a lot of extra damage on this outer turret here in the mid lane as well as Huey going to take that black shield and try and smash it through this turret. Not going to quite work as far as putting the pressure on, but we'll see what is going on here as the pause does come through. You can see just uh, just chilling out for now, but so far, Gamti managing to turn around and pick up a little bit more of an advantage. But it's still very even across the board with the kills even, at least at the moment the turret scores even. Only 200 gold in the game to speak of. So again, most of the structure is very, very even. It was a great rotation coming through from Gamti, taking advantage of the fact that Morgana had basically a free lane. There yeah. was a lot of lane pressure being put on by Corky. She could easily exit the lane. An excellent job with the layering of CC on Wayless. Yeah, ooh, Dark Binding gonna go wide there just a little bit from Sync Dream, but you have to think that you'd almost expect a, uh, a roam from Sync Dream early on. Imp is gonna be able to take down the top outer turret, though, of course, relentless pushing to come through from this Graves. And you think of Nara as a lane bully, it's Imp that's bullying this lane. Absolutely, I mean, Graves in a top solo lane is something that LGD have done a couple of times, but his 1v1 against any tanky champions, or really anyone that he outranges, is just surprisingly strong. You don't see it a lot because, again, he's primarily a dual lane ranged carry, but he can solo lane with the best of them. Oh, yeah. And that blue buff, it's going to go down. Actually, Schwen going to pick that one up. You would have thought that uh, Imp may have wanted that one as the unbar is to come through into Wayless, but not going to find the kill. Still having a lot of health, and he has actually gone for the Stinger here, but this is Wayless. He could be building a Zephyr. It could be always the Zephyr. The mana Zephyr has been a big thing for Wayless. But the reason why he's up to the Nationals too, after I spent so much time explaining why it fell away, is again, the last thing I mentioned was the split push. It gives a lot of split push options. It's a bit like the Yomo's Ghost Blade on a champion like Renekton. You know, it's an offensive option that you can use to split push effectively. And the only kind of window into the fact that they might want to be committing to the split push, they've got the double teleport. You mentioned it before. If you can go and split push really effectively and very quickly, abusing your passive, getting a lot of AoE damage on that, Diana, and then AO and then double teleport into a fight, we could definitely be seeing the 1-3-1 split push coming out of the Diana and Maokai. Yeah, that being said, I mean, we, we've been talking about Imp being able to bully his lane very effectively, all of this sort of stuff, making sure that he's ahead, but Tail, very, very even on farm, and now coming back into lane, does have the makings of the Phage and that Sheen, so going to have a lot of burst potential to come through from this Corky, but... PYL not quite level 6 yet, Sync Dream with a slight level advantage, which is not something you generally expect coming through from Sync Dream, having a level advantage on anyone. But Shrein going to help Wayless out on this blue buff, which has only just spawned, so that's two of the blue buffs. Im taking a lot of damage, but there's a collateral damage to come through. As Huey just going to try and ult in to protect his bottom lane tail. He's able to su survive the first bit of burst, but you have to think if Solar Flare was available, LGD, would have easily won that 2v2. And it wasn't actually kill potential. It wasn't an assassination attempt by him. He wants to take this outer turret. You can see with the Berserker's Greaves completed early and not just going for, say, an Infinity Edge or a completed Bloodthirster, he's more about rotating and using his BS sword and attack speed to take down turrets. So he's trying to harass Tail away from the turret so they can start to open up a turret advantage because once they have three turrets down, excellent time to plop Diana into the bottom lane and start this 1-3-1 one, one split push. So again, not looking for kills, but more looking for just trying to take some more of those objectives. Yeah, actually, speaking of looking for kills, Tails going to get black shielded here. He does manage to land a nice roster storm. They turn it around, but it's the kills coming through instantly as Lemmy comes down. The double Nara into the wallop here as well as Acorn. He's come round. So's Wayless who picks up Tail. Everyone coming through, and this is the benefit of multiple teleports. Huey, he's got a triple now in this fight. Wayless looking to try and pick one of his own, a quadra kill on the bottom side of the map, and Zhao Hu comes round. Can Huey get the pentakill in the bottom lane? He can! Ridiculous play from Huey. Insane play from Huey, just mashing that Q button down with the double buffs. Everyone rotating to bottom lane across the map, and Huey is the benefactor, sitting on 2,000 gold. He'd spent all his gold. All he had was a Warrior's Enchantment and a Ruby Crystal, but damned if he doesn't come out with a pentakill. Yeah, I want to apologize for everyone's ears, but that just blew my mind. Let's look at it again. So, of course, Diana was the first to rotate with the teleport. You would have thought LGD would have a big advantage. Remember, Imp's already 
used his big burst spell. So Tail lives a lot longer than you'd expect. And Huey's in the back line. It's two tanky members just fighting together. He kind of abandons Let Me to some degree. But he continues fighting. Gets the first kill onto PYL. He's already sitting at three at this point. The turret juggling is not strong coming out from Wayless. He basically dies to the turret. Finally, Xiaohu, the immovable artillery in Xerath, walks along. He actually went competitively for the kill there. He wasn't just handing over the Penta, but it is confirmed. That was beautiful play from Huey. And if you watched him, he managed to get an unburrow on every target that he killed. It is going to be the dragon secured for LGD. A buckshot going to take Sync Dream down relatively low here as well. And we'll see whether Huey can transition all this extra gold into an advantage here for Gamty, and I really like the Sightstone pickup, of course, now that he has a lot of extra money here in comparison to the rest of the members on the team. In fact, every single kill that Gamty have picked up now in the pocket of Huey, he wants to transition that into Vision. But and look at how tanky he is. There's so much carry potential required from the sub, we have to say. Just newly on the roster today. Already watched his team fall down to the strong AoE comp coming through from LGD. Suddenly thrust into the spotlight. This young player, a penta kill on his first on basically what's going to be effectively a full tank. And now we see the trading continue in bottom. Yeah, and beautiful Black Shield from Sync Dream going to stop Tail from getting locked up. Collateral damage is right into its face. There's the Solar Flare as well as Tail's going to take the back end of that um, collateral damage. And Sync Dream manages to answer with the kill on a PYL, but Imp, he's got plenty of damage and picks up the double. Yeah, the Penta doesn't distract Imp from his goal. He wants to get the kills, especially wants to pick up the turret. You can see the rotation comes through from Xerath and Rek'Sai, so he has to back away. But Imp on this Graves, aggression, it doesn't really fully capture just how strong he's playing. Oh yeah, he's going to back now, maybe even be able to pick up that Infinity Edge relatively soon. Wayless in this mid lane continuing to get further and further ahead in the farm. Of course, Diana, just a fantastic farming champion in general, sort of was why she was so popular when she was around, just able to clear out these waves and always have pressure on the turret because with that passive, with the proc that you get every third auto attack, you destroy turrets. In a split push, he's going to be very favored against, for example, Tail. Even though he has the Trinity Force, will not be able to hold up to just how tanky you are with the double scaling on AP and all the damage coming through from the attack speed on the Nationals too. Yep, Huey actually coming through to try and make sure that his blue buff doesn't get stolen another time. Wants to be able to give that over to Jahu so that he can just clear waves with impunity in that mid lane. And he's going to just stun that one up and take that with an Arcano Pulse. There it is nicely done and Huey going to continue on to that Grump. Shwen now does spot out Sync Dream here in the jungle, but... See whether anything comes of it. Just going to take a Dark Binding to the face. That was actually Sync Dream winning a trade. Not bad. And it feels very hard for both teams to really work out where they are in this game. After that Penza kill and then the subsequent double kill coming through from him, the game's all tied up in terms of kills, in terms of gold, even in terms of global objectives. It's very finely poised. You can see Gamti, they're the ones playing more aggressively, getting the aggressive wards down as we see across the map. Also, the rotations coming through from LGD towards the bottom lane. Yeah, and Sync Dream just leaving Tail alone here is going to mean that Imp can get his wish and be able to take down this inner turret in the bottom side of the map. Going to be answered immediately by the top outer, but not being able to get any farm on the AD carry. A lot of those creeps dying to the tower here. Xiaohu going to get aggressed by way. Let's get slowed down here as well, but manages to dodge a nice Arcano Pulse there. And Imp just going to let as many creeps die as he can, and Tail just wishing that he had a partner. And yeah, no rush in order to take this turret. It will fall eventually. As you mentioned, Tail falling behind in CS. It's only 14 at the moment, but it continues to grow with every minion denied at turret. And with the, with the aggressive wards down, there's no defensive wards at all for Tail. So if he even walks near that turret, he's taking a big risk. Yeah, you can see LGD, they're just conceding this inner turret in the top side of the map. They're pinging out the outer in the mid lane, allowing everything up top to fall. Arcano Pulse going to complete the combo here onto PYL as Xiaohu just going to get missed by that sonic wave. Going to continue to farm out this wave. I don't know, like, every time we see Xiaohu, he's farming so beautifully well, but Wayless still managing to keep that 20 CS advantage approximately. Yeah, it feels like Wayless is kind of bringing back the, the power farming style. He doesn't have the jungle item to necessarily pick up camps, but with the teleport, he's been so ever-present both in his lane and across the map. Oh, he's yeah. picked up so many extra minion waves. Not like his, the other members of the team are unfarmed. Of course, his AD carry is winning. His top lane is within 5 CS. He's just been so on the ball and so in the right spot to pick up every wave that's gone. There's been no CS lost to this LGD team. Oh, yeah. You can see... Decent deep vision to come through from LGD here as well. You can see that red buff in full vision of that team. 
Preseek going to find Schwen, but Huey, does he need to be making more moves around here to try and transition his gold into his other members by getting effective ganks across this map? Well, what he has actually done with his gold is the Warmock. So he's already taken it upon himself to be a very strong frontline tank against both the mixed damage. So he's got definitely the minimum of resist towards both the Diana and Maokai frontline, but also the Graves burst. Okay, it's not the randoms that he might want, but it does help him deal with the mixed damage on the side as well as He's starting that split push we spoke about against Teo. Oh my gosh, look at that burst damage to come through. And as he actually hits his combo, it's very, very frightening. Actually, Chilling Smite going to be used. Wayless tries to turn around Teo with beautiful flash mechanics. The unborrowed to get the knock up. There's the right of the Arcane. Wayless manages to dodge it, but it's not enough. And thanks to the pentakill, Huey picks up another one. Yeah, Wayless went for the fancy outplay. Both of them flashed at the same time, so oh all summon dear. is used. Oh dear, Lemmy's in a lot of trouble. Zenithblade going to land. There's a shield of Daybreak as well. He's so incredibly low, but so tanky. The Ignite not going to be enough. And Sync Dream, even though he missed the Dark Binding, still going to deter the other members of LGD. And I have no idea how Lemmy survived that. He's just so huge right now. Camti's rotations have actually been far superior to LGD's. We already mentioned... Okay, Imp was denying CS to tail, but he lo they lost an extra top turret just for, for their positioning on the map. Now Gamti pick up the last outer turret, so they're four to two up in turrets. They're actually able to afford a gold lead, and then we saw the gank coming through from the three members of LGD. So little damage between the three of them that Let Me doesn't even fall in a trade. And at this stage, LGD conceding the control of the Dragon Pit as it has one second to go. The members of Gamti not going to start it up just yet, but Huey is around. They're looking for a potential potential pick to come through. Dark Binding onto Imp as he gets the combo from Xerath here as well and he wishes he had Rider the Arcane. It's just about up again as he wants to try and get that kill on Imp if he can, but it means that this AD carry is going to be very low for the next fight. As you mentioned, no ward coverage available for LGD around the Dragon. You can see all their aggressive wards are on the blue side of Gamti's top lane. They tried to get a turret and, and a big dive and an exit kill on Let Me from all that vision. They didn't. And at the same time, they've been answered by Gamti, picking up a turret, now picking up a dragon. And that was the advantage that LGD had. They were two dragons to nothing. PYL going to get caught out here just a little bit. Let me just going to gnar PYL into the wall. Gets hit by a boulder as well. There's the Prey Seeker just to try and help out. But Huey, that was fantastic. Moving away from the wall, so he definitely couldn't get Zenith Blade. Yeah, they were queuing up for targets there to decide who to pass the goal to. It is Zhao who is on his trademark Zerith. He struggled in lane, and Diana definitely winning in terms of CS. Moving towards the Zonya second to have a stasis option, going to be an effective frontliner with the armor that works with the, the shield that's coming through. But Wayless really needs to work on his split push, and that's what he's trying to do. But Tails already outplayed him once, and the rotations for Gamzee have been far superior to LGDs this game. Yeah, and you have to think as well that LGD, the pentakill in that bottom lane, probably playing on their mind at this stage. Of course, Huey's so huge, and sort of you have to think that LGD might be thinking that's a drastic mistake that they've made this game. I mean, they're an experienced team, so hopefully they're going to be able to, to shake off what was just a large mistake. Too much turret diving, poor turret aggro juggling from yeah. Wireless. But at the end of the day, what they have to deal with is a front line that's just that much more overtuned. But look, they weren't opting into team fights with the summoners. You know with the double teleport and the Nashville's tooth pickup, they don't want to be team fighting anyway. Okay, now they have to double down into split pushing, but they just need to make sure they have the vision to open up split pushing as a realistic objective. Yeah, and the Rod of Ages is being picked up here from Acorn as well, so they definitely don't want to get into any fighting situations. It's only on four stacks at the moment. Probably going to be ready by about that 26 minute mark when it does come through. Jiahu just going to clear out this mid lane with tail as well, and they're rotating their Corky around, trying to pick up some extra towers, but you can see there's only a couple of inners left available. Ooh. There's the right of the Arcane to come down. Interesting timing on that one because, of course, Wayless was at full health. No real low health members as Dark Binding in a fine Schwen. Lots of poke possibilities from Gamti here as the Prey Seeker and those rockets are to come through here from Tail, not to mention Xerath being there. Let's see down the bottom lane. Let me pushing out minion waves. Of course, we saw Acorn on the top. He's now backed. He's grouped, going to group with his team. He has teleport available. He's using it. They're going for a fight. Yeah, Wayless has his teleport as well. The double teleport. Schwen might get caught up though, and he's getting exploded. Immediately dies, but look at the damage coming through from this Diana. That is ridiculous. The instant double kill. Sync Dream trying to disengage. Oh my gosh, that Frostwing's claim just saved his life.
But the engage coming through from Akon specifically, he was always known as the king of rotations. There's a reason why LGD have left Flame on the bench so repeatedly this season, is they want to play this rotational style and wonderful engage coming through from Akon. Yeah, beautiful work. They're looking to try and pick up a Baron here as well. Let me decides he's got enough rage. He wants to come in and try and do something as he wants to stop them from taking a free Baron. Huey's here as well, doesn't have any rage, can't actually get himself into this one. You can see they're going down very, very low. Dark Binding lands here as well, let me just Nas Imp into the wall. There it is, Baron helping him out here as well. Sync Dream though, he might fall down, does fall, but let me trying to do the work. That quick draw was perfectly timed as the Baron falls to Wayless here at the same time. Acorn looks for let me, but doesn't quite get there. Tail finally makes his way back as Schwen looks for the kill here onto this corky but he's got a lot of burst there's the Xerath stun at the same time the double here now for tail as the flash out of the way oh my goodness these ultimates haven't been working out necessarily all that well for Zhao who is right does manage to land that one and just the tip of the arcano pulse but the thing i have to come back is how great were the mechanics by imp in that fight on graves Yo, yeah, he lived beautiful. on so low health for so damn long didn't even have a lot of lifesteal to trade upon to lifesteal up off the very tanky front line of Gamti, but kept opening up space, kept getting resets on that quick draw, and had just enough life to allow that Baron to go down. It was super risky Baron from LGD. It looked really bad when the first kill came through, but they just amount of, about managed to juggle it. Yeah, and one thing that I want to talk about as well is to do with Imp here, who has the last Whisper in his back pocket. Do you think that a Blade of the Ruined King might have been a good option here, or is it just too difficult to build on Graves because he relies on that spell damage so much? I mean, let's let's track back to the, the pick that got them that Baron. They got it from Imp's Burst, so he's basically yeah, going true. for a Burst build. In previous days, it would have been the Legolas build, the Bloodthirster into the, the last Whisper, just to go full for Buckshot and ultimate damage. It's pretty much the same flavor here. Of course, you do have the backup of having significant amount of crit chance, but he's basically doubled down and said, okay, if I can get that first burst, if we can get the first kill, team fights will work out just fine. And of course it does, with all that armor penetration, help him do just a little bit of damage to let me in the front line. Oh yeah, and you say a little bit, but I think that that might be a slight um, yeah, misjudgment because it's, oh, it's definitely a lot. But, I mean, Randwin's completed. He's going to work towards his second armor item. The armor penetration doesn't help that much for Huey, of course, naturally fairly tanky. Yeah, that's sort of why I mentioned it, was the fact that he's got the um, the Warmogs here, so much health available. Absolutely. It's not gonna, he's not itemizing towards necessarily killing Huey, but damned if he doesn't have the AoE burst to really try and get that first kill and yeah. force the 5v4. And if they catch anyone like Sync Dream or Tail or even Jiaohu, then things could go very, very badly very quickly for Gamti. Oh, it's going to come through just momentarily. Of course, LGD managed to pick up a Baron, do a lot of good work, but they're still behind in gold. It's a really big pick coming out from Akon. I keep restating it, but the lane ward leading to the teleport gang coming through from Akon, it looked like he had Righteous Glory, but in fact, he'd gone for the Rod of Ages. We've mentioned the stacking already. Just got the first fortuitous pick. Whether it was Zhao, they wanted it on Zhao. He's the one you want to lock down on that immovable Xerath, and they did it wonderfully. You can see Imp, he's so focused, because this game is hanging on a knife's edge. You already mentioned it. Despite all that momentum, despite the 1,500 gold coming through from yeah. the Baron pickup, they're still behind in gold. It's very, very difficult here as well. And we're getting towards the middle of the split. Both of these teams very keen on getting a victory here, and the extra couple of points could mean everything for LGD. So really looking to make this a 2-0 sweep, make sure that they can get themselves back up these standings towards that top five position. And Gamti just want to keep working their way towards eight. They want to work their way into the playoffs. They've been anchored towards the bottom for all of the season. Yeah. But that big three-point victory against King last week and then just all the draws, they're inching their way series by series towards the playoff spots. Teams like M3, for example, have super struggled in recent weeks but have those 2-0 wins in earlier weeks to trade up on. Gamti, they only just got their first three-point win and they're trying to struggle towards just getting enough points to just make it's realistically it's eighth or seventh place that is the most they can achieve even with half a season left but they do have a shot especially on the back of this smart rotational play that we've seen the last few weeks yeah and their improvement over the split has been fantastic we've seen it again and again just making sure that they're not this team that sort of falls apart in the late game and now starting to be this team that's fantastic at moving around the map together and creating opportunities so We'll see whether they manage to utilize it and put it into effect this game because this is when they need to do it. I mean, the, the movement around the map has been superior. Yeah. We've already talked about the extra turrets they put out. They're still ahead in turrets. That one pick undid a lot of their good work. The Baron especially is going to be a few minutes of stall coming through from LGD. In terms of comp-wise, this is such a close game. 
And we're back into it now, ladies and gentlemen. Tail actually looking to go for a potentially that Infinity Edge next, but we did see Bloodthirster picked up into the Last Whisper based on these couple of items. Let me think, City may have got a pick here, about to transform. Whaler's going to use that Zonya's, but he's in a bad spot and he's going to die. Tail picks up that kill, and as soon as we're back into the game, Gamti turn it on despite the Baron. Now, one of the reasons that Diana fell off is that you need to be in melee range to try and do your wave clear. So Diana trying to do wave clear has enough AP to clear out those minions in the back line, but completely punished for it by all the picks. XCC coming through from Gamti, and that should be Dragon. Yeah, that's 20 seconds into the Death Chamber as well, and no teleport to speak of. Gamti able to turn this one into their third Dragon of the game, able to get a lot of extra movement speed here as well in 5%. It may be caught out as Rider the Arcane comes through to answer this one, and let me doing enough damage. There's the Hyper, and picks up the kill. Schwen now in a very uncomfortable spot, gets hit by that Phosphorus Bomb, forced to use the Flash, gets out of the way of the Nar, nicely done. And he is going to be safe, but my gosh, that was almost a massive string of awful events here for LGD. And LGD, the one thing you can say about their comp is their wave clear, it's good, but it's short range. And everyone that's getting in short range is being punished by the picks coming through from between Sync Dream and Jauhu. They're going to lose another turret. I believe this is all the outer turrets done for LGD, but in the mid lane you can see Acorn, he's trying to open up a bit of pushing. Yeah, I know, and he looks like this ancient tree here, and it does take him an incredibly long time to do anything to these turrets, but he does manage to secure it, of course. Void Rush was used from Huey to try and get down here, but definitely not going to be able to kill Acorn, and Acorn definitely not going to be able to kill him. Yeah, LGD playing from the front, getting picks, and then trading on their burst damage, and then short range damage between Diana and Imp's Graves look great, but when they're on the back foot, there's plenty of members to pick when they walk up to get that la get those last hits, as Let Me might have caught out Aton. Yeah, but Schwen and PYL are right here as well. He's trying to build up the rage. You can see his Nara is actually on cooldown at this stage. Sync Dream using that flash. Collateral damage comes through as every member of LGD. They're here. Huey's going to fall down. There's the Moonfall as well. Is Whaler's going to be able to pick up another massive kill as Jahu tries to get damage down on his way to the death chamber, and he doesn't. And LGD and GT are just trading back and forth this game. Yeah, it looks like they would get the pick the moment the Mega Knight transformation came through. How but the front Line, like Wayless is such a strong frontline champion on Diana, so deceptively tanky. He hasn't even used the Zonyas yet, Wayless. Yeah, he used it, I mean, just before he died before, but not in that fight one bit. You're exactly right. Let me somehow survived, allow me to point out. Not sure how that happened at all, but got the rest of his team killed almost most definitely. Yeah, I mean, they, they were the ones going for the pick. That's what you have to remember. They were building up their range. They had the Morgana Black Shield onto Let Me, but again, they bit off more than they can chew. You walk into those small jungle entrances against a Leona, against a Diana Maokai, and you pay for it. Oh, you certainly do. Infinity Edge has been finished now from Tail. Welcome to the Iron Solari on the side of Sync Dream here as well as theoretically a double AP comp to come down from LGD. Of course, Akon, the majority of his damage is going to be magic. We have to mention that, that Tail... He has a very high win rate recently on Corky, but you look at his build right now, he's bought the two most expensive items in the game between Trinity Force and Infinity Edge. Okay, if he gets that fortuitous Triforce proc into Critical Strike coming out from the Infinity Edge, could do a large burst of damage, but compare him to, to Imp, who basically, with similar CS, with similar gold, has gone for the full AD carry build. He has the multipliers. His right-click damage is going to be far superior. And Tail is still 2,000 gold away from finishing a Last Whisper against a Maokai that's starting to build armor. Chuen is starting to build armor. Wayless already is super hard to kill between the stasis, between the double scaling of that shield with the armor he's already picked up. The front line is going to be deceptively tanky against Tail, despite having those two big AD carry items. Yeah, it's a little bit frightening here. Of course, Tail able to do pretty magical things on this Corky, irrespective of that. But it's going to be very difficult for him moving forward. You can see Baron up in another 20 seconds. LGD looking to pick up their second of the game. And Ganty, you know, last time these sort of neutral objectives were going down, I mean, they let the first, you know, couple fall, first couple of dragons, but then managed to get a complete monopoly on it. Whereas this Baron only won... It's been picked up here from LGD, the first in the game. So we'll see whether Gamti want to get their turn. It's just such a close game across. So they've actually forced out the Maokai teleport after Let Me engaged on him. 
Yeah, actually, the jump was used here as well as the slowdown to come through from that Prey Seeker. Akon, they're looking for something beautiful. Black Shield to come through from Sync Dream and then uses that Frost Queen's claim to get the slow. And they don't get engaged on just here. So that teleport is going to be on cooldown for quite some time. Wayless, that one's down as well. And Ganty now able to orchestrate these fights as they see fit. LGD really wanted to get a pick with Baron respawn. They knew one kill would be a probable Baron. They've already shown they'll rush down Baron with minimal members around. They're not looking to get a full ace before they try that objective. But excellent disengage coming through from Gamti. Of course, not that long a cooldown solo throw. It's already half off cooldown, but they've blown the teleport from Akon. They have a big teleport advantage now. Yeah, and having Huey this tanky as well means he can check these brushes. Akon looking to come through. Already taking about half of his health. Is Sync Dream going to use that lock into the Iron Solari to keep his team up? But again, Gamti able to stop the engage. And Akon, of course, doesn't take all that much damage. But Huey now looking to try and engage. That's the Soul Shackles only onto the Maokai. Probably not the one they want to be picking. Let me! There's the double Nara into the wall. Wayless is in on this fight. But look at the right of the Arcane. Zonya's going to be used to try and save Wayless' life. But he gets exhausted. Tail somehow survives as Imp uses the heal to keep himself up. Tail, even through the Solar Flare, he's going to be okay as Let me just bounds over the wall and somehow only Wayless is dead. Just an insane fight around the jungle. You saw Imp wasn't able to do a lot of damage. The short range AD carry Graves couldn't even do damage while Akon was taking so much in the front line. Wayless lasted a long time between the shield reset and the stasis, but all of LGD were in really bad positions to be able to force a fight, and the result is a one for zero. Okay, they lose the minimum, but still, LGD have to choose their spots carefully. Oh, this is beautiful play from Huey as well. Make sure that he stops the backs as much as possible so that he can get in and get started on this Baron. Let me is forced to actually head down to this bottom side of the map. We have credited Gamty on their wave control before, but it's not working out quite so much this time. Although that was the most beautiful Arcane kind of Pulse to watch. Yeah, waves are absolutely oh gosh, completely on top of Gamty's turrets. They have to disengage from Baron. They thought they might have the potential to rush it down. This is the third Dragon opportunity for both teams. Both of them sitting on two buffs. We thought it was already Gamty's third, but they're only sitting on two. Oh, yeah, LGD right. wants that move speed. Yeah, both of these teams actually vying around this Dragon. You Scrying Orb going to be used here, and LGD have got prime position. It's down to 2,000 health. Rockets to come through here as well, as they're looking to make sure they have Schwen in here for that smite in order sec to secure it. Double, te double teleport, 5% move speed, a lot of rotational advantages in the pocket of LGD, even in terms of engage. You saw how badly they wanted to engage that last fight, using an ultimate just to try and get a Morgana support, using Acorn tanking so much damage before they finally got the engage. 5% move speed for their tanky initiators, very important for LGD. Oh, yes, yes indeed, but... Ganty now have an opportunity to continue their ward control around this Baron. Of course, they did manage to make, their, make it there and pick that one up. Wayless has teleport available while he's split pushing here, but this Baron's going down incredibly fast. Ganty will see whether they decide to stick on it. There's the teleport to come through. Akon has drawn them off that Baron, but PYL goes down so low immediately here as Ganty trying to turn it on. Tails untouched in the back line, but the Zonya is going to be used from Wayless. The Unburrow, they secure the kill. Tail still alive here in the back line. It falls down. That Prey Seeker was insanely good. And Schwen now going to flash over towards his Baron, but he's not aggroed anymore. Tail continues to get the damage down. Look at his health bar. He is so low, and Akon just gets kited, and that's the ace for Gamzee. And the person you need to credit there the most is Zhao. There is no words to describe how smart his positioning was throughout their fight. Most of the time, we couldn't <laughs> even get him in the picture as we see Corky dying to the AoE. Huey's tanky. It's going to be a difficult Baron. They should eventually get it just because they have so much health on Rek's side. But I hope we get the replay just to see some insane positioning from Zahu and excellent te team fighting from Tail. Their target selection was the difference. So many flashing health bars, but the Baron to show for all their trouble. Yeah, Baron to show on a couple of their members, of course, probably would have wanted that one on Tail, but not going to be happening here as Baron now able to finish him off. But now has a Bloodthirster under his belt. Decided not to go for that last Whisper. So interesting one. Of course, Corky doing a lot of mixed damage, so it does make sense. He does have, of course, the, the 40 armor penetration and an AoE coming through from the Gatling gun. So he has some armor penetration. I guess at this point, he's looking for his, to his friends to help him for killing out that front line. Very difficult to DPS down the Maokai. But everyone else is going to be taking massive damage from Tail. And of course, the Bloodthirster shield gives him the defensive option as well. Yeah, that is true. 
Meanwhile, if we have a look at the CS count in this mid lane yet again, Xiaohu has managed to catch up just a little bit, and Wayless has picked himself up a bit of a negative scoreline here, although he has been having to die very aggressively in these fights, irrespective of whether they're won or lost. So able to still do what he needs to for his team, and if he kills Tail in a fight, he's done his job. This is, of course, the second Baron buff we've seen. The first one went to LGD, and you'll remember it kind of halted quickly because Wayless got caught when he was trying to clear waves under the turret. I feel like, guaranteed, they don't have that problem. They have long-range wave clear from Xiaohu. They have a more balanced pushing comp. I think it would be very difficult for LGD to get a pick, barring an incredible face check coming through from Gamti. Gamti just want to group and push down some of these objectives. Yeah, you can see it looks like the wave actually pushing out here for Gamti here on the top side. The bottom side looking to get reinforced pretty soon from LGD, but a lot of these creeps are going to die, so getting the slow push on and making sure that Gamti can push up this mid lane with these barrened up creeps for as long as possible. Schwen sort of in no man's land in his jungle here. And Hugh are going to come around and look for him. A little bit of miscommunication on that, uh, that ward placement, but that's going to be okay. Just make sure that you can see all of that brush. It's always a good idea. Absolutely. The minion waves in the side waves is going to be a very slow push. They're not going to be a big factor right now. LGD, they have good wave clear, but as we've mentioned a few times, it's fairly long, short range and a 500 range or less on that wave clear. So there still could be the really big coming through, pick coming through, especially from Sync Train. Yeah, Dark Binding going to go wide here, but you can see these Siege minions doing a lot of work. That Baron, that uh, tower, still at relatively high health as the Buckshot's just going to be used to try and clear out this wave, as well as that Crescent Slash. And Akon taking a little bit of poke from these Arcano Pulses. And Gamti, you have to think that with all of their poke, as you mentioned before, this is sort of what their comp wanted to be doing this whole time. It's the world's slowest push. It's the only real MVP of the push is that Siege minion still doing damage out of the range. They're trying to tank the saplings coming through from Acorn. They haven't been able to get Tail in position to get auto attacks, but he's going to start now and they might get it. Yeah, Huey actually going to come very far forward. They take the inhibitor turret here as well, and the inhibitor, it's going to fall down. Very useful Baron to come through from Gamti. And they don't even mind. They're just going to leave these uh, Siege minions here and continue their push on the bottom side. Yeah, that Baron doing exactly what they need. It looks like they would have to wait for all these minions in the side waves to group before they finally could get the auto attacks. This tail been so well denied from getting a Triforce auto attack on the last minion wave. That time, though, they get the big engage. They managed to corral LGD away. Maybe the LGD will call back. It's hard to say. With that massive minion wave pushing in the top and now super minion waves in the middle, not a lot of good decisions here available for LGD. Yeah, this is just like a cooking show, isn't it? This is the minion wave that I prepared earlier. Really beautiful play coming through from Gamti to orchestrate that push with the Baron. These minions are getting cleared out relatively quickly on the side of LGD, but it's meaning that this tower is taking a lot of damage, actually. Just more than happy to tank it up, and the, the second inhibitor turret going to fall down on the bottom side of the map. Schwen sort of had enough here as he tries to get a sonic wave onto an opportune target. Black Shield is there, though. And now Gamti looking for the re-engage. Let me see it. He's transformed as well. Huey down incredibly low. And now under three members into the wall. Look at them falling down as POL forced to use that lock into the ancillary. Let me down so low. Huey low as well. Xiaohu picks up the kill. PYL, that's a double kill now for Xiaohu and Tail. Still at such high health. They're going to be able to pick up their second inhibitor. Gamti are so smart at fighting around their carries. You always saw Tail and Jahu safe in the back line. The tanks in the front line doing the work. They were killing the tanky members like Akon very slowly, but it didn't matter. They do get them eventually. Look at Akon. He's so tanky, but he'll fall eventually, and so will LGD. Yeah, slicing. I mean, not slicing. Vengeful Maelstrom, not quite enough to save his life there as Wayless. He's back alive, but... Not for long, you have to think, but he takes down Sick Dream. A triple kill instantly out of nowhere. And we may have a game continuing, ladies and gentlemen. So much damage coming out from this day on 9, 7, and 4. Not respecting the voice out that's just completed. Wow, we pronounced their death too early. That instant triple kill was amazing from Diana. That was unbelievable. They still have to contend with multiple lanes of super creeps, but LGD, they survive for a little bit longer on the back of this mid lane, Diana. Now 10, 7, and 4. Trying to vindicate the off meta pick, Wayless. He's going to feel so much better about this, Diana, in a few weeks when we jump towards future patches and that slight buff comes to the shield. Doesn't look like he needs it just now. Yeah, LGD now going to make it four dragons to two here as well. As the 5,000 gold lead going to stay there. Of course, Dragon not giving you too much gold, but now 10 turrets to 4 in favor of Gamti. They're playing this one beautifully, and that Baron buff was fantastic. In fact, the inhibitor turret in the top lane fell down just to that gigantic creep wave during that exchange. So 
Gamti able to utilize the fact that they did have a fantastic wave pushing. Void Rush going to be used here just to get Huey into that river. Of course, Baron is one minute away. This will be the third Baron. Gamti made excellent use out of the second one after LGD got picked and couldn't really use the first Baron they picked up with that brute force uh, rush down of the Baron in the face of Gamti. So the next Baron coming through is going to make it so difficult for LGD, even with double teleport, to be pushing with no inhibitor turrets, with three super minion waves being pushed, at least Baroned up minions. There's not a lot of good strategic options. They really need to force a pick, and to be honest, they really need to compete for this Baron. LGD sort of on their last legs at this stage, but do they have enough wave clear to push out these super creep waves? Because then Gamti, they just set themselves up in a brush and force LGD to make a face check move. I mean, their wave clear is good, but they need to group as a five to clear far effectively and then push down minions. And that's not an option they have with their bottom inhibitor down. They need Wayless group with the team because this is what happens yeah, when you face check. PYL, he just gets caught out. There's the Arcano Pulse and Huey able to secure the kill. Even with the double teleport almost baited Way Lesson to be using for wave clear, but they need the five-man group to get any semblance of wards down. PYL inevitably is going to be the first one to die in the crossfire, face-checking to get a ward around Baron, and you have to think Gamti going to rush this one down. Yep, Valkyrie going to use just to get tail over the wall and start this one up. It's a 4v5 here, and Imp gets not into the wall. There's the wall about Oh my goodness, just so much damage to come out from Xiaohu as Gamti now turning it on. And this could be the last hurrah for LGD as Acorn gets destroyed. Schwen as well. And Gamti just looking so beautiful on the rift. Tail now just tries to pick up the last kill, but it's going to be Let Me that secures it. They want Tail's damage on the Nexus. Wayless. Tries to come through to make another hero play. The flash out as well. He's got a Guardian Angel. He can do some work here, but it gets propped. And with this Bloodthirst, you have to think the tail not going to waste any time. Yeah, Wayless does fall eventually. He's just trying to bite time. He actually cancelled his teleport to get into the fight because he knew that all the CC was coming out the moment that that channel ended. And Gamti, in a really exciting game, Finally take it down. And what a beautiful fight back victory after that first match here as well. And Gamti, they looked great in that first game in moments, but of course lost out due to that team comp just not quite working. And this time it was just beautiful play. And Xiaohu, you have to say, his Zerath is unbelievable. In the first game, they had a very difficult team comp to play against. They needed multiple factors to happen. They needed to keep track of everyone on the enemy team to win a fight. They managed it a couple of times. Eventually, we were kind of choked out of, out of life by LGD. But this time around, much more balanced comp. And the use of the Baron to me was the big difference between the two teams. Yep. The first team, LGD, they picked up a sneaky Baron in the face of their enemies, got caught, and couldn't really get a lot of purchase out of it. But Gamti, both Barons decided the game. Yeah, and there were a few shaky moments for both teams as well, getting caught out. But of course, when you've got team comps like this that want to make catches and start fights, that's what happens. And it just was Gamti capitalizing more beautifully, as you mentioned, especially with that Baron. And this 1-1 one, one look in a best of two format, it halts the momentum of both teams to yep. some degree. Obviously, only one point coming out with this result. But Gamti will be a big confidence booster to again take down a top scalp. Of course, they've beaten OMG. Now they've beaten LGD. They're not getting the three points, but on performances like that, you have to think they're getting in a position to start assaulting the top spots. Oh, yeah. Gamti really able to play with the top dogs. But of course, this was only our second match up of the night here for the LPL. We have King taking on World Elite after this short break.